When you do personal Bible study, are there tools that you should be using to help assist in that process? And when you do use those tools, how do you take that information and put it into more of a organized note structure? Well, today in this very short clip from a much longer podcast, me and my friend Rob from the Babbling Pastor podcast walk you through what we do and the tools we use to do that. Hopefully it's helpful. Let's get into it. Um, I mean, what what I've talked about so far is the process that I do on the whiteboard. Um uh, speaking. Okay. Well, what is, what is speaking? What does he mean by that? What are all of the observations that can be made just from, uh, that idea speaking the truth? Um, it, it requires your mouth and vocal cords. <laughs> it's, it's not only, um, the things that you do or being a good citizen, because then, uh, you, you, uh, what you end up doing is having people, um, uh, see your life and go, wow, uh, and then attempt to mimic you without ever hearing that it's actually Jesus. That's the reason that like, I live like this. It's a um, secret sauce. It, it requires speech. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. Well, speaking what? The truth. What's the truth, right? So those are the kinds, of, I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Uh, that That's the whole process on the whiteboard is I'm just, I'm looking at it word for word, word by word. And, and um, if they're uh, major uh, words like this, like speaking and truth um, and love. I'm going to want to know what what love is that. Um, grow up. That's got to be one one Greek word. What does that mean, right? Um, we're to grow up. <clears throat> well, a lot of people get saved when they're adults. So, so what does that mean, right? Um, uh, so uh, he just uh, finished saying, "No longer children, tossed here and there by every wind of doctrine," right? Um, uh, and then I can't even read what that says. It's so little on my screen, but, um, uh, and then uh, I just kind of started thinking about, so we're to grow up. Okay. How do you do that? Uh, here's some steps to that. Like you read, <laughs> you pray, uh, that's really cliche, but there's a reason it's cliche, right? Um, uh, so I, I guess, I don't know what all you want me to, to no, jump that's into good. here. So. I like that. I want to try to share something here on my screen, and I don't know. I don't know yep. what, what version you use in regards to. Um, let's see if I can pull. Here we go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to do some, you're some about movement. Bible version. Well, I'm talking about like for you're talking about word study. So what I've got pulled up here oh. is. Um, let me try to pull this up so that everyone. I don't know if that's even visible, but the point is one of the free ones that I. Um, try to tell people is step the step bible app there is a um hmm. there's a, a web version which is what you're seeing here and yeah. then there is a um uh, like a, a app as well the app obviously is an app so it's a little bit you know lighter as far as what you can do but i've just pulled up ephesians 4 here if you go to verse um 15, which is what we got here. So rather, and if you see at the bottom again, it's got the Greek at the bottom with the definition. So rather can be, but, and then rather, mm -hmm. and then you can work through and almost every word that is of it, like actual, like as far as lingual importance, you can highlight and it will tell you at the bottom. And what, what's helpful is if you click on it, you have word analysis and meaning on the right. You have all of, it's just a tool to use. Again, it's not going to go super in depth, but it is going to assist in regards to um, like studying a little bit deeper. We're not getting super deep over here, but we're getting deep enough that, um, like you said, with the love, with the truth, with the growing up, it at least helps in that regard. And so that's a free one. I tell people about Logos all the time, but obviously Logos, you got to pay for that. Um, yeah. uh, Bible Hub has an interlinear Bible app on their uh, app as well as online. It, it works similar to this uh, Step Bible app. It's a bit more complicated to use, to be honest with you. It's not quite as intuitive. But um, mm -hmm. those are just a couple tools that you can use um, to actually dig into those words. Now, one of the things, and I'm just going to share my screen real quick because I have a similar process. I do like how you've put everything kind of down to the left. I think that's helpful. Um, let me pull mine up really quick. I know there's a lot of screen sharing here. Um, I use this right here because people ask about it all the time. I'll try to link it down below. It's the ESV Digital Bible Journal. It is yeah. 
um, like thirty dollars if you don't have a Crossway Plus. Uh, like if you don't have a member, not, it's not even a membership. It's just an account with them. Literally, all you do is sign up for a free account, and they drop it to fifteen dollars. So, like, why would you not sign up for your free account? And so, um, all you ha uh, this is just a PDF. You open it up in your, in my case, iPad, and there's the Files app, and then you go to the Markup tool, and you can literally go through this entire uh, thing and just mark it up. And this is how I basically, this is my whiteboard version because I have to have a visual representation in front of me <laughs> in order for my yep. brain to process what's going on. And so just like you, basically all I'm doing is saying, okay, well rather, obviously when he talks about rather he's speaking about everything up here before, and then working through, I'm not going to do the whole process obviously here, but the point is going through and, and saying, okay, what are the main points here? Well, he's speaking truth and love for what reason? So we are to grow up in every way and to him who is the head of uh, head unto Christ. So there's, there's a lot happening just in this verse. I'm sure we'll talk about some of it more as we walk, work through your process. But the point is seeing like, what is he saying? I'm just not trying to read it. I'm trying to say where, like, as this sentence, as he's building out this idea, this one verse is incredibly important to his point. So he's talked about mm -hmm. everything before. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way to him who is the head. So he's making a point here, again, with that body analogy, the head is Christ. And then what happens? Well, from Christ, the whole body joined together is held in every joint, right? So he's making a huge point here. We're speaking truth in love. Christ is the head. We are the body. And what's the purpose of that? Well, making the body grow so it builds itself up in love. Well, we've already talked about the love. We're talking about truth and love. Like there's these, again, I'm doing this on the fly. So excuse my exegetical yep. work here. <laughs> but, but the <laughs> idea know. is that there is a connection that's happening just in this verse. And this is just like, again, super surface level study here of seeing how things are being connected together within what he's saying. So you're not just... I think one of the things, and I don't know if it's anybody's fault necessarily, but um, when I was being taught to read the Bible, like that wasn't explained. It was just read the Bible. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so you just sort of read it, but you're not critically thinking about how these sentences are built together or the importance of everything that comes before or like how he is sort of contrasting starting at verse 15, everything before verse 15. And so the idea, and I again, this is why I like kind of what you've done on yours, is that you've you've put it together here where you're you've broke it down all on the left which again i think this comes down to like if you're listening to this or watching this wh what is you, like how does your brain process information knowing that is incredibly important yeah, to studying sure. the bible and so if it's better for you to print off like you know, you can go online and type in whatever version of the Bible and print that off and then mark that up to kingdom come. Or is it better for you to have a note and write it down the line and then go through and do it the way Rob has it on his board? Because I think, again, we've talked about, yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's Rob. I, I think it's important to know that so that when, because some people will stop studying their Bible. We're not even talking about sermon prep at this point. Some people will stop studying their Bible because they're like, this is too hard. Like, it's just boring. Mm. I don't understand what's being said. And if you don't know how to learn, you're not going to, you're not going to do it. So maybe my way doesn't work for you. Maybe Rob's way doesn't work for you, but there is a way to study the scriptures that will work for you. And there's tools like the Step Bible app or Logos or Bible Hub or whatever that will help you do that more. Um, a question I do have for you. How long typically does the process we see on our screen right now oh. take for you? Oh, that process? Um... That, that so this process actually doesn't take that long for me um uh, well i guess that's relative uh but um uh, I, I don't know probably 45 minutes maybe i mean depending on the text yeah um this is one verse so it would be it would it would be a, a short shorter kind of look through some of them, so just last week I did all of Psalm 2, which is 12 verses. And so, I mean, that took a little bit longer because I'm, I'm looking up more words, um, the original languages and, and things like that. Um, the references, Old Testament's quoted in the New, you know, and so um, you, you look at those and make those connections. And um, yeah, I, I will say, um, so just one one thing uh, from, from what you were talking about, I've... 
I've seen, uh, especially when I was first starting to preach regularly, like weekly, um, I spent uh, some time uh, watching videos and, and reading different guys uh, talking about their sermon prep. And like guys that, you know, like, uh, like Piper and um, uh, Lawson and like just guys that I listen to and think, wow. Um, and, and every one of them are different. <laughs> right. I mean, there, there are similarities in everyone. Right. But the, the nuances, like the, the little things that, that this guy does, that's a habit or, or whatever, they're all a little bit different. So to your point, it's not that it's not that there's a, a hundred percent correct way to do it. Um, uh, I think if you're doing it and you're not looking at original language at all, that would be an incorrect way to do it. If you're doing it and you're not making the connections like that are if if you're in the New Testament and there's an Old Testament quote or vice versa, uh, you're in, in the Old Testament and and then it's quoted here in the New uh, and you're not making that connection, that that's not good, right? Uh, I mean, so there are things that you must do just because of the nature of whatever text is in front of you. But um but as far as the methodology and the the order of things or the way that you go about it, I mean, that's that's going to be different for every human probably a little bit. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So I this one verse took 45 minutes, which is, I think, a, a good note. I try to one of the things that I try to tell people whenever they get frustrated with studying the scriptures is that like this isn't like this isn't supposed to be a quick process. And I think sometimes people have that in their head where they're like, well, I was told to do devotions and I got, I got up, I got a shower and I got like six minutes before I got to go drive to work. And you try to fit it in like super quick, just cause you, you have to do it or whatever. The idea is that like this one verse took 45 minutes to do efficiently. Now, again, you're not going to do this with every verse every time, but if you're going to study the Bible, you need to set aside time for it. A good movie, right? It's an hour and a half, two hours. Sometimes they're making them three now. And there's a reason for that because to tell a story efficiently, to have good character development and like actual like dynamics happening, <laughs> um, you, you need time to build that. And if, if that doesn't happen to the point of the movie, you're frustrated that you've wasted all of this time on that big pile steaming of poo because you're like, I wasted two hours and I got nothing from this. And I'm so, going to start preaching for three hours now because of that <laughs> statement. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. Um, if your church, anybody from your church has used this, my apologies. So um, there, there, there is a time where it takes like, you need to realize this is going to take longer than five minutes sometimes, especially if you want substance out of it. Like if you want some real substance out of it, you cannot rush this. It's a microwave meal versus cooking a really good meal. Like that takes longer to do. And so just, mm -hmm. just don't get frustrated with the, the, the reality that sometimes you are going to have to carve out some time. And that probably means, to be honest with you, you're going to have to give up time somewhere else. But it's going to be more beneficial. Like, don't watch that TV show, maybe. Or, you know, what waste time flipping through Instagram. Oh like, there's, there's better time to be spent. You just have to figure out where that time is. So, yeah, that's a, that's a pet peeve. Um, we could go on for a long time. Uh, we, <laughs> You know, uh, I think, I think too, so earlier I mentioned reading plans and, and reading it quickly and seeing the whole scope of things. And that's great. But sometimes you just need to spend a month in this chapter <laughs> or that chapter, right? Or this narrative. Um, and, and that's okay too, <laughs> right? That's where this kind of stuff happens just in your Bible study. If you're doing a reading plan and you're reading five chapters a day and that's your like, you know, 15 or 20 minutes or however long that might take someone um, in the morning before work. And that's that. Well, you're not gonna, I mean, you're going to pick some things up, but you're, you're not going to get into the depth of the scriptures then. Um, it does take sacrifice, but I think, <laughs> is it really sacrifice, right? Like, what are we sacrificing? A um, uh, 110 years ago, people would have been like, what do you mean? Sac like, no, when you watch TV, instead of read the Bible, that's sacrificing like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, 110 years ago, they probably wouldn't have said TV, but you get the point. Um, we, uh, we, we, this is a different culture now. Like we have to learn to be, be Christian about things, but, um, but yeah, I mean, so after um, what uh, I guess, I don't know if, 
if you want me to keep on going, it's yeah, it's all so the same. It's after all the this same process. Thing. So yeah, so let's go. So obviously, after this process is done, this is the whiteboard mm-hmm. process. So you said there's times where yeah. you're gonna like make notes. There's gonna be questions you put forth that maybe you don't necessarily carry over to the sermon. So it, this process here is everything sort of written down. We've kind of looked at all the words. We've asked all the questions. Maybe we've done some word study here, and now we're going on to maybe. Uh, what what maybe I would call like the application process or maybe the writing down process. Now, again, I want to make like really clear before you answer that question, like what the next step is after this, that for believers that are just doing this in regards to just studying, I don't want somebody to think that, um, oh, well, this next step isn't for me then because I'm not preaching it. Okay. The reality is like, I just want you to think about this again. This does depend on like how you process information and all of that, but I don't want you to think that like, oh, well I went through and I marked it up and so I'm done. Right. The believer, like when we look at the qualifications for elder, the only difference between uh, the qualifications for elder and what would happen is that, you know, there's a, uh, the ability to teach it. So that doesn't mean that you just like, oh, I've studied it. Great. Like there, I think there is a process in which you go, well, how does this apply to my life then? And some Mm. of that application does come forth, especially for us that preach in the writing down of the points or the main, like Ross Phillips' manuscript. Oh yeah. Like there's a point in which we have to say, okay, I might not be communicating this to anybody right now. But if we're believers, you're going to be in the world having conversations with people, believers or not that will coincide with the verses you've just studied. So maybe you don't write it down as formally as what Rob's going to walk us through here, but you at least have something in which you've worked through that I've studied this, then therefore, how does it apply to my life then? So this is your next step, Rob. Walk us through this step. Well, so this is, this is the final product actually. Um, So this is what I, whenever I preached this text, this is what I walked into the pulpit with. And like you, uh, so this is a lot more uh, than what you would walk in into the pulpit with. But um, but th- this is uh, whatever I walk up there with is expendable <laughs> in a sense, right? So um, uh, I I follow the the general and and some of it some of it I might read, uh, but like so frankly, I, like I do a lot of Bible reading in, in the midst of it. And I'm, and I'm reading that, (laughs) right. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, quotes or things like that, you want to get that verbatim, but, uh, everything else is expendable like this. What you see, uh, in front of you here is the opening prayer, right? I'm, I'm not necessarily reading that word for word. It's just, I have these points that I want to make sure that I hit. Um, but I, like all of mine are set up like this. This is what's in front of me in the beginning. Um, so I know I'm going to read the scripture first. That's also a pet peeve. Um, uh, before I'm I'm not going to get 15 minutes into my sermon and then decide to read the text. Um, but so I'm, I read the text and then I, uh, open in prayer. Um, there's a little bit of a greeting that I do um, about every time. Uh, then there's an introduction. And when I'm walking through a book of the Bible, my introduction is basic. it, It almost always uh, catching you up. Uh, if so, if you're brand new, you're not completely lost with where we were. Yeah. I've um, walked so in, I Frodo about... has a ring. He's throwing it into a thing. What's the ring? Why is he throwing it into a volcano? I don't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so there's a, there's a last week, right? Um, and, uh, let's see. So, um, and I highlight anything that's scripture. I highlight in a different, even if it's just a phrase like this, um, there's a different color for me cause I don't know. It just helps me, but, um, so, uh, 13, 14 and 15. Um, so uh, apparently I don't remember, but apparently verse 13 and 14 was the week before. And then this week would be that the, this particular sermon is verse 15. So, and then that's today. So there's, um, uh, I'm making the connection there. The, but is being taken care of here. Um, and some of this, you know, um, um, so then uh, there's another thing I'm, I might highlight something that I really want to, or that I think is like the main transition or a, a main major point. I want to, um, if not word for word, get close to word for word. There's the preaching text. Um, and then, 
Um, and then I, um, yeah, you can see here, but <laughs> from your, yeah, from your whiteboard to here, really a lot of the points of like, have come from there onto here just in a more sort of uh readable yep. format i suppose it, it went from mm -hmm. that crazy conspiracy meme to like oh here we go okay now we've structured it out a bit more but you can see that they've right. they've they've been brought over yeah yeah um and let's see um so this is the comparison right falsehood versus truth and then uh, i break down falsehood this is the last you know, a couple of verses, a few verses uh, before verse 15, talk about these um, deviations from truth, right? Um, and then, well, there's truth. And so uh, I talk about the differences of those um, things and why they're antithetical. And um, I haven't looked at this in a long time, and I didn't look at it until I shared my screen. So <laughs> no, it's fine. I think I, I think the, the gist of it is just demonstrating that um, one, I think it shows a few different things about like people picking up on their own learning processes. So like highlighting okay. things, I've tried that. My brain does not remember what in the world blue meant versus green. Like I just I can't do oh, that. Yeah, yeah. But for you, <laughs> like that is super helpful. So I think that's important for people too. Again, it probably more leans more on the actual presenting it side of the of, of the picture. But the idea is like knowing like how does this work in a way so that I'm communicating the points I need to communicate, um, and then breaking it down in such a way that like. Again, I think this is great because it demonstrates our different learning processes. I would have like a bullet point of this versus like 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 a Roman numeral and a point one and a two. But the idea is how like that's what is the best way that I've looked at this to break this down so that I remember it. That's the point, right? The whole idea is that mm -hmm. I am I think sometimes and this is I mean, we could go on about this about even the Southern Baptist Convention currently. But everyone yeah. is supposed to proclaim the gospel. Like, here's my point in this, right? Everyone mm -hmm. is supposed to be a proclaimer of the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. That may not be in a formal way in front of everyone else, but that doesn't negate the reality that you should know the scriptures in a, in a detailed way so that you can present them, right? So it may not be like this right here is a preaching outline, but that doesn't mean that the average everyday individual shouldn't be working through scripture in this way so that it's in your head. Are you going to remember every single, like, like I think you, you said, even when you pulled this up, like I, you didn't read verbatim from this, but you've right. worked through it so that when you do present it, um, you're trusting the spirit that um, the important bits are going to come out <laughs> and we're going to cover the stuff yeah. that, that need to be presented. And I think this is the part where a lot of people go, well, this is like, this is the pastor's job. This is a bit extreme. Like, I don't, like, I am not interested in getting this deep. And I think what you said before, it's really priority. We live in a culture in which, for example, like, I remember reading yeah. about, like, Jonathan Edwards and John Wesley. Like, when they're 12, these bros are reading Greek. And, like, it's just expected, <laughs> yeah, right. right? That's just yeah. expected that they know the original languages of the scripture. And um, the expectation is just different. And I think if we have belie as believers understood that, like, we're supposed to study the scriptures. We're supposed to, like, I mean, be ready to give an answer for what we believe. And you're only going to be able to do that if you're in them. And again, I think part of it is just knowing how you learn. I mean, if you, if you don't know and have never been taught and, you know, boo-hoo on the American school system for not being real good at this. But, like, if you don't know the best way to learn the best your way of learning, you're not going to be able to do this well. So I think the first step is just knowing like, how do I learn the best? Hopefully you found that helpful. If you're wanting to see the full discussion before it goes live, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below and sign up to get the full episode now, or you can push subscribe on this YouTube channel and make sure you catch the next episode of the Babylon Pastor Podcast next Wednesday. I'll see you then.